Lecture for today, I can identify, define, and graph relations and functions. Let's read it together. One, two, three. I can identify, define, and graph relations and functions. So today we're continuing with the two variable equations, but today we're looking at two special types, or a special type of uh, two variable equations, which is called a function. But today we want to clarify these definitions because this is where I start losing some of you guys. Okay. So once again, stay focused. We're looking at relations and functions. Today we don't need a fair model. We do need steps. Write these down, please. Step one, represent the ordered pairs as a table, mapping diagram and graph. Step two, identify the domain and range of the relation or function, in parentheses, set of ordered pairs. Step three, define the relation or function. Define the relation or function. Copy those. Um, uh, write it under the steps. Here we go. The first one. Ordered pairs. Focus, please. Ordered pairs. What are ordered pairs? Ordered pairs are a coordinate. No, still under, right there under the steps. Ordered pairs are a coordinate. And it's written like this. Parentheses, x value, comma, parentheses, I'm sorry. Parentheses, x value, comma, y value, close parentheses. That's how the ordered pair is written. But instead of variables, we usually have numbers. And I'll show you those examples in a little bit. So just write that. The next definition. So everybody's seen those ordered pairs, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I gave you a lot of them, all of those together are called a relation. Because a relation is a collection of ordered pairs. Does that make sense? Yeah, right? Kind of like re it just rolls straight to that. Now, today I'm going to show you what a relation is, but I'm going to show you a special type of relation that becomes a function. A function is a relation, but that assigns exactly one output value for each input value. And I'll illustrate that in a little bit. Okay? Now, I don't know if you noticed that on the ordered, on the ordered pair of the coordinate, I wrote the X in red and the Y in green. Do you guys notice that? Yeah. Why? Because the X values of any relation is known as the domain. What is the definition of a domain? All X values of a relation or function. With that same idea, the range is all Y values of the relation or function. So, as you're finishing up, let me give you examples of ordered pairs. Let's say I gave you the ordered pair 2, comma, 3. Is that an ordered pair? Yes. Let me show you another one. 3, comma, 7. Is that an ordered pair? Yes. How about uh, 9, comma, 10? Yeah, that's an ordered pair. How about uh, 8, comma, 9? Yeah, that's an ordered pair. All these are ordered pairs. And if I said, copy all these ordered pairs, all of them together become what? A relation, because the definition of a relation is a collection of ordered pairs. Does that make sense? Yeah, right? Now, if I was to ask you, look up, please. What is the domain of that relation? And I said the domain is all x values. Well, let's see. What is the x value of this first point, of this for first order, order pair? 2. What is the x value for this one? 3. And the x value for this one? Nine. And this one? So my domain would be 2, 3, 8, 9. Does that make sense? So therefore, the range is all y values. What is the y value of this first order pair? 3, then 7, then and then, nine. so my range would be 3, 7, 9, and 10. Does that make sense? Yeah, right? According to the definition, that's how we get the domain and the range. Okay? So, with that said, everybody ready? Okay, one minute, go. So, now that, I, that we clarified all the definitions, now let me elaborate in regards to where we're going with this. Okay? Now, 
when we started our school year, I already mapped it to, uh, for you the other day that we started with real numbers, right? We moved into expressions, moved into equations, and moved into inequalities, okay? So when we moved into equations, I remember the, the steps were simplify, isolate, plot, and check, which means we needed our real number line. And I remember I labeled the very first one that we drew, we labeled it X. And I said, after we solved the equation, we plotted our solution. Remember that? Okay. Yep. But this week, we introduced ourselves to two variable equations. Okay. And today, we're going to continue. But now, we're, since we're going to be starting to graph two variable equations, I want to clarify. Hopefully, uh, if you haven't seen this before, this will clarify. Um, in the past, there was a, uh, a mathematician that figured and said, you know what, I want to graph and I want to work with two variables or two variable equations, but I don't want people to get confused in regards to what they see. So then he said, if I bring another number line here, look up please, and I ask people to graph two different variables, some people are going to get confused because the lines look the same. Don't they look the same? Yeah. So therefore, in order to know that they're working in two different variables, this person said, what if I take the second line, oh. invert it, and combine it with that, and now we know that we have two variables. We have an x and a y value. That's why this kind of graph is known as the coordinate plane. The original um, mathematician that found out about this, his name was Descartes, a French guy. That's why this coordinate plane is also known as the Cartesian plane. It's after him. So therefore, he figured, look up please, he figured that in order for us to work on two different variables, we no longer have to stay just on the line. We can actually place a point anywhere and assign a ordered pair or a coordinate for it. So therefore, the first, what was the very first letter we started with uh, graphing? X. That's why the very first value corresponds to X. And what is the X value for this one? Look at this. Two. Two. And what is the Y value for this one? Three. Sorry, I had a race. My bad. Well, sorry. Uh, right there. Okay. It, what is it? Three. No, it it. My bad. Let me let me turn that around. Sorry. Yeah, I I, I should have switched it the other way. Let's see. Right there. There it is. Three, and now the negatives are down here, okay? So therefore, that's why we now assign coordinates to each point. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So that takes us to two variable equations and graphing. So what are relations? Let me give you a good, uh, a very simple example of relations. Watch. So let's say I'm going to apply this to a, any regular day. And, and like, like probably you already know, I try and see math almost everywhere I go. So let's say I was to ask you guys, you know what, we're going to leave the class right now and we're going to go walk into Wally World. Yes? To, to Walmart. My bad. Walmart. So, so we go walking from here to Walmart, right, over there. So, and of course some people don't like walking. Some people. And some people like walking. I like walking and I, I walk fast. Some of you are going to keep up. And some of you actually uh, want somebody to keep up with you with your talking. So if you need somebody to listen, I'll be walking pretty fast and keep up with me. So when we get there, I said, as soon as we get there, I'll buy you a drink. And who's seen these vending machines as you walk in? Yeah, yeah right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so there it is. So, so as you walk in, you're going to see one of these vending machines. And they are 23 cents each soda. Bam! Pretty good, right? So anyways, if you notice here, look up please, there's 13, no, 12 buttons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 buttons. Are we there so far? 
Okay, so with that said, so when we arrive, the first ones that arrive there, uh, can you get the other light? Turn it off, please. Thank you. When we arrived there, I said, um, you know what? Whoever comes in, I'm going to buy you guys a drink. And this is what relations are. Here it goes. There's an input, which is the button that we press, and there's an output, which is whatever drink comes out. Are we there so far? OK, okay so check this out. So um, the first ones that kept up with me, let's see, it was uh, Lauren D. Lauren D., uh, which button would you press? Uh, 10. ten. So she pressed a ten, and she gets a diet, Dr. Pepper. Okay. From there, uh, Rudy, what button? Number seven. He presses number seven, and he gets a Coke. Noemi, what button? Is that in there? the bottom. Uh, this one? Yes. No, it's a cactus cooler. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of orangey, yeah. <laughs> like today, people are dying of thirst. A 10. So then, 10, and it's a doc diet Dr. Pepper. So then the next, next person, uh, Kendra. A 4, and she gets a Pepsi. And then from there, he comes David. A uh, four again, and it's a Pepsi. Okay, and then Kylie. Uh, wait, is number nine a Dr. Pepper? No, number nine is a great, uh, a great soda. I don't know. Uh, I'll take, no, no, yeah, no, 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 number two. Number two, and she gets a Diet Coke. I'll stop right there. So now check this out. This, what we just did, is a relation. Let me show you why it's a relation. What was the definition of a relation? A collection of ordered pairs. Do you guys see the ordered pairs? Ten, comma, diet, Dr. Pepper. You guys see it? Let me show you another one. What is the other ordered pair? Seven with Coke. How about the next one? Ten with diet, Dr. Pepper. So since we're making ordered pairs out of this, this becomes a relation. But this is also known as, pay attention please, or you're going to miss it, this is also known as a function. Let me show you why. I pressed 10 here, what came out? I pressed, I pressed 10 here again, what came out? And then I pressed 4, what came out? Pepsi. From there I pressed 4 again, it, like what came out? Pepsi and so on and so forth, and then the last one, two, and then I got a Diet Coke. So it's working, it's functioning correctly, is that correct? Yes, yes. All right, so that, that was the first wave of people that arrived there, so I said, okay, go inside, go shopping, I'll wait for the other lazy people that were uh, uh, walking their way very slow, and, and then I said, and I'll buy them a drink also. So I'm going to make another input output table here, input, output. Okay, let me move this over a little bit. Okay. So, so here comes Danielle. Danielle, what button? Is number five is water. So she wants a water, so five is H2O. Okay. Of course, here comes Marissa. What, what button, Marissa? Four. No, 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 it's 11. 11, which is a cactus cooler. Okay, and then from there, Alyssa. Um, is number three Pepsi throwback? Yes, Pepsi throwback. Yeah. So number three, Pepsi. Okay. Uh, about. Who? Okay. Uh, Tori. <laughs> number six. <laughs> number six. She got a T. Christian, number one, which is a Coke, Martin, what is it, he presses one, and he gets a 
Diet Dr. Pepper. Okay, hold on. Has that happened to you guys? When you guys, you're really thirsty, you go, you look at it, I want that. And you put in your dollar, and guess what? You press it, and what comes out? Something totally different. Has that happened to you guys? No? Really? Anyways, check this out. So, look up, please. So, let me ask you this. Uh, you have a question? I have a comment. No, I, I got it. I got, I got that. We'll address that in a little bit. So, look up, please. So let me show you that this is still a relation, right? Can I make an order pair out of this? Yes, 5 comma H2O. Can I make an order pair out of this? Yes, 11 C squared, which is the cactus cooler. Can I make an order pair out of this? Yes, 3 Pepsi. Can I make an order pair out of this? 6 T. Pair out of this, 1 Coke. And can I make an order pair out of the other one? 1 Diet. Dr. Pepper. So, is this a relation? Yes, because it's a collection of order pairs. It's, the same exact. it's not the same exact. What's different here now? Okay, did it work? Did it fun Did it function correctly? No. No. This, when it did not function correctly, this is not a function. Okay, watch. We pressed the first button and it gave us a Coke, right? Yeah. Right here. We pressed it again and what did it give us the second time? A Dr. Pepper. So, so now let me show you with numbers. Focus, please. Let me show you with numbers. Let's say Let's say I assigned, now instead of just writing Coke, Diet Coke, and all this, I'm going to assign numbers to this. Let's say this one is uh, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160. So now check this out. With numbers, this is what it looks like. In well, sorry. In, out. So I'm going to use this one and copy it here. This is 5, 11, 3, 6, 1, and 1. So what is 5? That's 90. What is 11? 150. What is 3? 70. 70. What is 6? 100. What is 1? So what should I get here if it's functioning correctly? Okay, once again. According to the button, if I press 1, what am I supposed to get? 50. But what number came out? What was this? Diet Dr. Pepper? What's Diet Dr. Pepper? 140. So this is how we know when something is just a relation or if something is a function. Watch. Whenever you see that the input repeats, did it repeat? Yes. And if it has two different numbers, then this is not a function. It's only a relation. However, look at the first set that we did. Everybody look up. Did, did any of the x values repeat? Okay, so with that said, I said in the first time that we did this, did any of the x values or inputs repeat? Yes, the yeah. 10, if I press 10, I got Diet Dr. Pepper. When I press it again, what did I get? Diet Dr. Pepper. When I press 4, I got Pepsi. When I press 4 again, I got Pepsi. Therefore, this is a function because with the same number, we get the same output. However, did over here, did it repeat? Yes, here, but did we get the same output? No, we got two different outputs. This is not a function, it's only a relation. So, with that said, that was a quick intro. I want you to copy this down, please. Example number one. It says, express the relation 2, 3, 4, 7, 6, 8 as a table, as a graph, and as a mapping diagram. Also write the domain and range.
Copy that. Okay. So it says, express the relation 2, 3, 4, 7, 6, 8. Is that a relation? Yes. Why is it a relation? What is the definition of a relation? A collection of ordered pairs. Do we have a collection of ordered pairs? Yeah. Yes. That's why it's a relation. And it says, express that as a table. Have we seen the table so far? Yes, I showed you a couple already. We did some with, uh, with the vending machine. Here's one. Do we know how to graph? Did I show you uh, the graph that we're going to be using? The coordinate plane? Yes, there it is. The only thing that you haven't seen is a mapping diagram. This is what it looks like, mapping diagram. And you're saying, whoa, that looks a little bit different. But you'll see how this works. This is going to show us whether a relation is a function or not. Okay? We can also see it from the other places, but this will clarify it and also the graph. So, here it goes. First of all, we need to set our ordered pairs here. So what are my ordered pairs? Mm -hmm. Two, three, I'm going to write it here. Two, three. What is my other one? Four, seven. What is my other one? Six, eight. Why, why did I place them there? Because we know that the one on the left is the x value. The one on the right is the y value. Everybody there so far? Okay, so did we express it as a table? Yes. Now let's express it as a graph. To graph 2, 3, let's see, 2 is here, 3 is here, and they both intersect right there. Let me do that again. 4, 7. 4 is here, 7 is here, and they both intersect right there. And the last one is 6, 8. 6 is here. 8 is here. And they both intersect right there. Are we there so far? Okay. All right. So let me use a mapping diagram. For the mapping diagram, I'm going to use the x values. And if there are any numbers that repeat, I do not write them again. So you remember what I just said. So let's see, let me look at my x values, 2, 4, 6. Do I have any numbers that repeat? No. So I just write them here, 2, 4, 6. Let me look at my y values, 3, 7, 8. Are there any numbers that repeat? No. no. So I write them here, 3, 7, 8. Okay. Let me move that down a little bit. So you're saying, well, what's the difference from this to this, Mr. Q? Well, for mapping diagrams, you actually need to indicate the relation from one number to the other. So let me ask you this. The 2 corresponds to which number from this side? <laughs> 3. The 4 corresponds to which number? And the 6 corresponds to which number? 8. And we need to indicate it like this. Copy that. I'll give you about 30 seconds, and then I'll elaborate a little bit more on that. All right. So, so far, are we good? Yes? Yeah. Now, check this out. Um, this says there's some points. And so far, do any of the x values repeat? No. no. Since none of the x values repeat, that means we cannot really tell whether this is a relation or if this is a function, but since we can't really tell, then uh, automatically this is a function. Everybody with me? Until we can see that it's not. So what if I gave you this? Look up, please. What if I gave you this ordered pair? I said, write this down, 2, comma, 10. So then we would write it here at our table, 2, 10. And we plot that on on our uh, on our line on our graph, two comma ten is up here. By looking at the graph, look up please. As soon as you see that for an x value, two points are stacked one on top of the other, that is not a function. Okay, some of you got it, some of you didn't. And I said, now we're going to write this on our mapping diagram, but without repeating any numbers. 
We got two, four, six. Which one repeats? Two. So do I write it again here? No. Here we got three, seven, eight, ten. Do any of them repeat? No. But I still need to write the ten here. So let me go and let me start from the top. Two corresponds to three, four to seven, six to eight. But then it's what? Two, two, ten. And what do you see? That for one input, there are two outputs, so this is not a function. Are we done with this problem? No. What does it say at the end? Write the domain and range. So let's write our domain. Let me scoot, let me move this over. Here we go. Domain. The domain for this one is what? 2, 4, 6, and 2. So what should I write? 2, 4, 6. What did you notice? You write all of them except the ones that repeat. Range. It's all my y values. 3, 7, 8, and 10. And we're done. No, we still we're still not done. Yes. Um, on range, let's say would you ever tell us the graph from there? How do we know the type of the two? On here? No, wait, what's the thing? No, Over here? No, on the domain and range. Yes. How do we know the type of the two? We don't know unless we see it on the mapping diagram or on the uh, input output table. Okay. Okay. All right. So with that said. We're good up to right there? Yeah. All right, so check this out. So for homework, you're going to have a problem that looks very similar. It's going to say express the relation 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 5 as a table, a graph, and a mapping diagram. So then you would do this, this, and that. Fairly simple? Okay, all right. But this is where I want to go. Copy this one down. Example 4. The number of dollars Melody earns for working X hours can be represented by the function f of X equals 5X. Graph this function and state the domain and range after five hours worked. Yes, only the black and the blue text. Copy that, please. Okay, as you're finishing up, it says, the number of dollars Melody earns for working X hours can be represented by the function f of X equals 5x. How do we pronounce this? Let me write it underneath so you guys can see it. This is pronounced f of x. f of x. What does the f stand for? The f stands for function. It's telling us that it is a function. Therefore, it says graph this function and state the domain and range after five hours. So watch. To graph this, I need a table. Who's seen this? X, Y? Yes? So, I'm going to start from the beginning. Without working any hours, the X value is 0. So I substitute that in here. What is 5 times 0? Yeah. 0. Okay. After working 1 hour, Melody can substitute that in here. So that becomes what? 5. five. After 2 hours? Seven. 3 hours? 15. After 4 hours? 20. After five hours? 25. And after six hours? 30. Okay. To graph it, let me ask you this. What does the x value represent? What are these? Very good. Hours. And what is this, the output? Very good. The money. So <laughs> x values are the hours. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is hours. And the y value is the money. And I'm going to go by increments of 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And this is the money. So can we plot this over here? Yes. Yes. 0, 0, 1, 5, 2, 10, 3, 15, 4, 20, 5, 25, 6, 30. And do you guys see my my graph here, okay? So now check this out. Still not done? 
Here it goes. It says, state the domain and range of the hours work after I'm of the uh, after she worked five hours. So, five hours is up to right here. Is that correct? Yeah. So I need to state the domain from here to here. So let's see. Domain. What would be my domain? Okay, I heard zero, one, two, three, four, five, up to five, right? Yes. Is that correct? Oh, wait, no, after so that means that, wait, wait, uh, after five hours, which is up to five, okay? So, no, 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 what I'm saying, after five hours have elapsed, so it's from zero to five. Let me ask you the question. Let me ask the question. I heard zero, one, two, three, four, five. That is incorrect. When you work, do you work from one to one hour straight, like without stopping? No. What if somebody came and got you and there was an emergency? You're going to have to stop wherever you stop. Is that correct? Yeah. So that means if you worked three and a half hours, are they only going to pay you three hours? No. They're going to pay you for whatever you worked. Is that correct? Yeah. So now thinking about that, what would be our domain? Zero through five, how can we write that? Exactly. Zero less than or equal to X less than or equal to five. Does that look familiar? So therefore the range where's five? Here? What was what was the uh money? Twenty five. So what is the range? Zero less than or equal to Y less than or equal to twenty five. Yes. A uh, good one, guys. Home play for tonight. Pages 130 and 131. A uh, good one. See you guys. Tamales. Yeah, I know.